So in this example, we are going to use Laplace transform to solve this differential equation. So let's obtain the Laplace transform of the differential equation first. And I'm just going to do this, transfer this y to the left hand side. We didn't have to, but that's okay. Uh, first, let me recall what this function u1 is. So, so u1 is unit step function, which is or which takes on values like this. Okay, that is, uh, it is going to be zero if we have uh, zero less than or equal to t and that is less than one and this number is determined by the subscript here sometimes people write it differently and this is one if t is greater than one so here it's just just a coincidence that uh, you know this one and that value one are the same all right but uh, this point is determined by the subscript here okay so this is the unit step function and uh, now we have to take the Laplace transforms now you know all these Laplace transforms you calculated and they're also with you uh, in the form of a table so let's recall them step by step so <clears throat> recall that the Laplace transform of a derivative is the that will be s times okay uh, the Laplace transform of y minus the value of y at zero, okay? And uh, this uh, value of y at zero by the initial condition is given to be two. So we will just uh, write that value down here. So we got the Laplace transform of dy dt and ly of course will be ly because we are going to solve for ly and take the inverse Laplace transform then. Now next we need the Laplace transform of this function on the right. Now if you recall that you did this type of calculation as the uh, second translation function, uh, sorry, second translation theorem, that is if the Laplace transform of a function f is uh, or little f t is capital F s, okay, then what happens is that if I take the Laplace transform of uh, you, I'm just taking the subscript alpha here because here we are going to turn the function on after a distance of alpha instead of one, okay, t, and then multiply it by f of t minus one, that is f is also shifted to the right by one, then this value you found it equal to, or you can look at it from your table, that this transform is e to the negative alpha s, okay, so alpha s times the Laplace transform of f, or you can write it in shorter notation in the following manner, that is uh, just write it like this and then write capital F s here, okay, and uh, Sometimes people write it as capital Y S for, I oh know that will be for little y. Let me just not talk too much here. Okay, very good. So this is the Laplace transform of uh, this. Uh, and here I made a mistake. I should have this and this have to be the same. So let me just uh, fix the notation. I'm sorry about that. And this is again alpha okay all right very good so now what we would do is we will use it to uh, write uh, this Laplace transform so you can see alpha is uh, 1 so what we get e to the 
negative alpha s will be simply e to the negative s and then this was tree transformed to uh, who t minus 1 so this is going to be Laplace transform of t and you know the Laplace transform of t is how much it is simply 1 over s square right okay so that's 1 over s square okay so that's the Laplace transform of this function on the right hand side is so let's go ahead and write the Laplace transforms here okay or uh, let me do this that is sorry I'm not writing by hand rather being lazy here just copying pasting but uh, you know what's going on so this is Laplace transform of y and then on the right hand side I have the Laplace transform of this function okay now uh, this value the first one you just determined already that that is uh, you know s times Laplace transform of y minus 2 we are going to leave this as l y and then on the right hand side what we have e to the uh, e to the negative s over s square now what we have to do next we have to solve for l y so first thing to do would be let's just add two on the both on both the sides so just take that two to the right we get that right okay and then we have s plus one that's a common you know this l y is a common factor here so we get you know s plus one times l y equals this uh, quantity right and then now we can uh, solve for ly by dividing the equation by s plus 1 so what will happen on the right hand side we shall have uh, this s square plus 1 goes here and then we have uh, 2 divided by s plus 1 over here okay and uh, now what we have is that uh, our y will be the inverse Laplace transform of this function on the right hand side so let's go and figure that inverse Laplace transform out now before proceeding ahead it will be good to uh, write this as partial fraction so that we can uh, relate so that we can find the inverse a little more easily so you know for the partial fractions uh, you, you are good at getting partial fractions now so we'll just let the computer do it so this is how it's broken up in partial fractions and uh, now my y will be if you substitute uh, these values in here then uh, my y will be what the L inverse of okay or the inverse Laplace transform of okay let's write them one by one so first uh, we have this and multiplied by e to the negative s okay then we have minus okay e to the negative s divided by s right okay then plus e to the negative s divided by who s square plus uh, two times uh, l inverse of one over s plus one from here right so now so let's go back to our table and if you look from your the, the table of Laplace transforms that that you had worked on you will find that the Laplace transform of e to the alpha t is how much 1 over s minus alpha and of course you had that 
S has to be greater than alpha. So 1 over S plus 1 is a Laplace transform of who? Instead of negative alpha, I have plus 1. So alpha is negative 1. So if I write the uh, inverse Laplace transform of S plus 1, then that will turn out to be e to the uh, negative t. All right. So let me just first get that portion right. So that's e to the negative t. Now let's take these guys one by one. Okay. So when we are working on this, that is the inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative s over uh, s plus 1. What we uh, notice is this. Remember, we just uh, did this a short while ago that, uh, uh, let me write it like this here. Okay. So, so for this one, let's pay attention to this because uh, this is how it looks like. I have, what do I have here? I have the inverse Laplace transform and then I have e to the negative s times 1 over s plus 1. The reason I wrote it like this, that now this looks in this form, okay? Or in other words, Remember, there was another form that we had for this. That is the Laplace transform of a small f is capital F written in terms of s. So 1 over s plus 1 is capital F s here and e to the negative s is e to the negative alpha s. Okay. So alpha being negative 1, so what would that suggest is that we will have the unit step function with shifting by 1, right? So here we have u1t and that is multiplied by who? f of t minus alpha. That is here I have uh, 1 over s plus 1, okay? And uh, remember that 1 over uh, s plus 1 is the Laplace transform of e to the negative t. All right. Now, since we have shifting by alpha here, okay, that is we have to take f of t minus alpha. So, we will have e to the negative t and my alpha is 1. So we will simply have e to the negative t minus 1 as the inverse Laplace transform of this quantity. Okay. Uh, now let us work on the uh, inverse Laplace transform of uh, e to the negative s over s. So as before, uh, let's write that in this particular format. Okay. So here I have s. So first of all, uh, what uh, we have here is uh, this. That is uh, my alpha again is how much? My alpha again is negative. Uh, my alpha again is one. I'm sorry. So here I will have u uh, one t again. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply by the inverse transform of 1 over s shifted by 1, right? But 1 over s is Laplace transform of the function 1. So uh, what would happen here is that, that we shall write uh, the inverse Laplace of s, which is 1, shifted to the right by 1, but that doesn't matter. It's a constant function. So it will remain the same. So this Laplace transform is u1t. And now let's take up this uh, uh, portion here. So again, uh, we are going to write this as the inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative s, right, times 1 over s square. 
Now this negative S here indicates our alpha is 1. So we got uh, U1T again, okay, and then times. Uh, now you saw just a short while ago that 1 over S square is the Laplace transform of who? T, right? So that will be simply T shifted to the right by 1, that that will be U1T times T minus 1, okay? So let's just quickly write these down and simplify our answer, all right? So we have this and uh, you just saw that the inverse Laplace transform of this portion would be this uh, value, right? Okay, and uh, then this uh, is inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative s over s is simply u1. So we will write that as u1t and then the inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative s over s square is uh, u1t times t minus 1. So we have this and then at the end what we have this is simply e to the negative t. All right and we can further simplify to get the final. So the final answer is uh, that if we go ahead and factor this u1t, so what uh, we shall have is, uh, we shall have all this then uh, plus, so e to the negative t minus uh, 1, right? And then plus t minus 2, right? Okay. So we can get that as final answer or just leave it like this if we don't have time. Okay.